Welcome to EE 380. It's slightly chaotic as seems to be all this quarter. Um, in any case, this is this is a sort of suddenly and created uh, gathering uh, because uh, Dimitri made a post to uh, uh, um, to Hacker News, which uh, gathered an enormous number of comments about uh, uh, how he thought that uh, Google was uh, uh, dying as a, a search engine. And so I'm, you know, suggest that what we should do here is he should start out and talk a little bit about the um, uh, what he found and what he had to say. And then uh, Danny, who is uh, the, um, I don't know, Danny, what do you call yourself? I'm the public liaison for search. The public liaison person. He was actually uh, uh, a, a publisher long ago of uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, SEO stuff. So he's got uh, a lot of experience with uh, the particular problems that we have here. And so um, I expect that he'll have uh, some answers to questions and some things. And then uh, if you all are willing, uh, I'd love to uh, to just open it up and have discussions about what's going on here and what uh, what Dimitri found, what his experiences were, and what your personal experiences are. Um, right now, I think uh, the the uh, uh, positions everyone has is that Dimitri says it doesn't work the way he wants it to, and Danny says, well, it works the way it works, and it works. So, um, you know, let's try to find out what what's really going on. I don't think uh, I want to see anybody holding uh, uh, positions where uh, uh, which are not supported by evidence uh, and uh, are supported by emotion. But beyond that, I think anything goes. Okay, well, can, can you tell us what you what you found and what what was it that motivated your post? Um, yeah, so I mean, I've like looking into search and organizing information on the internet is just something that I've been doing for for a while now. Um, and this particular post, um, I think I wrote this because I saw a lot of people like there have been a lot of posts recently saying something along the lines of Google search results are bad. Um, search quality is declining like every every like few weeks. These have been popping up, especially recently. Um, and I just thought that most of them did not like point out the specific um, issue of like authenticity of content. Um, so my post was mostly focused on this idea that people are appending Reddit to their search queries because they don't believe that most of the results they get uh, are authentic websites or authentic people that they can trust. And that was kind of like, that was the gist of, of what my post said. Okay. And you saw, did you do some experimentation of, uh, uh, and to try to establish that that, or is this just sort of a general feeling that you've had? Um, well, yeah, this type of thing is hard to get uh, quantitative data on because it reflects people's psychology. So it's kind of a qualitative thing, like, um, like we're trying to capture this idea that people don't believe in their search results anymore. Um, the, there is one, the qualitative piece of data that, that we do have is that, um, like Reddit searches, like the word Reddit in Google searches is increasing or has been increasing over time. Um, like that on itself doesn't like prove why people are adding Reddit to their queries. Um, but we at least know that people seem to be adding Reddit to, to their search queries a lot more. Um, and I also think that even though we may not like I think the 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 biggest data points to be is the fact that this post got so much attention and so many people saying, yes, I agree, I relate to this post, I do this. Like there were like many, many people who seemed to resonate with what was said. Um, so like the Reddit graph plus all the qualitative uh, um, feedback from people, I think kind of supports the idea that of at least the Reddit part of this where people think results are not trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So, Danny, do you want to pop in here and say a little bit? Sure. So, I mean, I think the most important thing is you said something like, I say it works and it works fine. And I I don't want to take away from anybody's concerns. It, it, 
if you don't feel like Google search has been working for you, me or anybody at Google saying, well, you're holding it wrong, isn't really going to play well. You're, you're not happy with it. And we want to understand why so we can see if there's things that we can do that improve. So I'll, I'll share some things about how we work as we talk here. None of that's really meant to kind of refute somebody having a bad experience, but I'm hopefully going to shed some light on some of the things that are going on and, and maybe get to some of the qualitative stuff that, that may want to be out there. Um, we'll start with what I thought was the heart of the post about people wanting the authentic con content. I totally agree. People want to get you know, authentic information. They want people, if you do a search for product and you're looking for reviews about it, I think you want to have people who have used the product, reviewed it, done it on some mythology on how they're going with it, rather than somebody who's just gone to Amazon, found five reviews and lifted them all there. Um, that doesn't mean it all has to come from Reddit, Reddit necessarily. And I think it's also can be like dismissive of some sites that do really good work. <laughs> the post, for example, sparked a conversation on Reddit where I saw one person complaining that, well, they are getting reviews from The Verge and they don't like that. That's not authentic because they don't even use the products. And as someone who regularly reads The Verge, I know that they've used the product. They do really in-depth type of things. So then I don't know whether that person is concerned that the content wasn't authentic because it came from a large brand at this point, and maybe it was monetized because they had ads to pay for the people producing the content, and they just preferred content being authentic because there are no ads and it's on a forum. That, that kind of range can be all over the place in how people interpret what authentic content is. But overall, yeah, I think people would like to get more of that. Um, we want to show people more of it. We have a whole series of updates we've done over the past year that we refer to as the product reviews update to make sure that when we're showing people content for product reviews, we're trying to show people content from people who've met that kind of criteria. They've actually used the product. They've done in-depth kinds of research. So I'm sure there's much more we can do to improve on that. But I also don't think that you just take the fact that someone's put Reddit into a search result to say that that means our search results are not succeeding. And in fact, there's some, there's a, I think a good argument that they're actually doing the opposite, that it, they show that we're very successful. Reddit is a popular site. Lots of people like to go to it. My kids go to it. Me, not so much. I'm not really at the age that grew up on, I'm not to be out of Reddit. But they like it. Lots of people like it. And apparently the Reddit search engine itself is not very good. That's what I gather from the things I read over this past day. So people seem to be going to Google also because they know they want the content at Reddit already. It's not a question of they went to go do a Google search and they hope to just find something sort of, what, what have you got? They deliberately want stuff just from Reddit and they're finding it actually very useful to instead going to Reddit and searching there to come to Google, do the search, add in Reddit, and get the Reddit results that we're providing better than Reddit does because I think we're maybe a better search engine on that front. I do a similar type of thing. Wirecutter is a really popular review site. They do really in-depth stuff. Really, I I've never wanna buy anything if I haven't found the Wirecutter review at this point, right? It's like how I used to be with Consumer Reports. I never felt like I could buy anything unless Consumer Reports had reviewed it. For whatever reason, though, if I want to see if Wirecutter has written about a particular product, I don't go to Wirecutter and search there. Maybe it's because I don't really remember where their search box is. Uh, maybe I've used it before in the past, but I typically would just go to Google, type in, you know, best product, whatever, Wirecutter, because I know Google will get me to the Wirecutter stuff that I wanted. It had nothing to do with me thinking Google wasn't a good search engine because I put Wirecutter into my search. It had everything to do with, I could trust Google to get me to the right content by giving it more information that I wanted. So I think when you look at that sort of thing, or if you look at the rising usage of Reddit and in going into queries, that also could be by explained by the rising popularity of Reddit and people wanting to go there as well. What I don't wanna take away is, Clearly some people are doing that because they would like to get more Reddit-like or maybe more discussion-oriented type of content that's out there. And that's something we'll be looking at more. Like, are we not showing enough of that? Should we be shifting to show more of that kind of material? Is it more helpful? Are there ways we can automatically detect if our systems and they all automated, everything's produced automatically, 
should understand that, hey, in this kind of query, maybe getting more of this content from Reddit or you know, some of the other forums that are out there would be more useful because that's a good mix along with the other kind of content that we're showing as well. Well, I mean, if I should just jump in or yeah. really want to do this. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, no, I think there there's definitely a, a broader point uh, here about uh, people wanting information from specific websites. Like some people trust Reddit a lot. Some people trust other, like some people will want a Stack Overflow answer specifically, for example. Um, and I think there there is also like a lot of things that people mentioned in the comments, as well as this idea that lots of the information they used to find while searching is now like locked behind private communities. Like the discussions are happening in Discord chats and private communities that people can't access anymore through Google, through Google or any other search engine for that matter. Um, and I think a lot of people um, like, yeah, a big piece of this is people wanting that community information or that community discussion that they can't find anymore. And Reddit is one of the last websites left where they can find it. So that's like part of the reason behind this whole, yeah, Reddit uh, or another website situation. Um, but I do think that at, at the same time, I, I would think that it should be reasonable that if I search something in Google without appending Reddit, I should still expect to get results that are worth clicking. Um, and of course, search quality is very debatable. We can talk about what a quality result actually means. I would be curious to hear like your take on how Google actually thinks about a quality result as well. Um, but I think it is like reasonable enough to expect if I search for a product review or for a food item without appending some specific website that I already know has an answer, that I should get a good result. And just to provide a really specific example, um, I wish I had time to actually make the slides for this, but I did go look up some specific queries. Um, and I found like like one, one interesting thing I found is there's a search engine called u.com. Um, it's ki kind of new, but basically I searched for uh, Lenovo, like uh, I searched for like a laptop review basically. Um, and in Google, the first results are, yeah, these like big corporate sites filled with ads and then u.com, they also have like very similar websites, but u.com does this thing where they extract, um, the actual information from the page, um, which I think solves one of the other big complaints people have. And the big issue people have is that the first set of results on Google are like filled with ads. And once again, this applies to probably many search engines, but they're like the first set of results are these pages that are a very bad user experience. I'm not sure who would consider it to be a high quality result unless you have an ad blocker on, but we should ideally be able to use the web without ad blockers. Um, so what u.com does to solve this problem is just extract the actual information so we don't have to look at ads. Like that's like one example solution. Um, sorry, and then did, another, oh, did, sorry. Did yeah. you say, so you did the search and they got all the information you needed from the website. So you didn't have to click on the website at all. Yeah. Like in, in the case of you.com, they're able to give me the Lenovo review without like the, the actual page of the websites are filled with ads and like sales links to a bunch of things. And it's like, this is what people are complaining about when they say Google results are bad. They mean like, they mostly mean like the web is bad perhaps. Um, but like clearly this seems like a solvable problem if like you.com could summarize. And I know Google does this as well for some results where they extract information and try to provide these like chunks that give you what you actually search for. Um, so that's kind of like one example of a thing that I see that Google is not doing that perhaps it could be doing. Um, if we took entire content from websites so that you didn't have to visit the websites, I think that you would find people would scream at Google and say, how can you destroy websites and their business model for existing? And I don't, I don't really understand how something like a you.com, if they're doing that, like you said, when I do a search, it should be reasonable. I should find things that make me feel like I should click on them, which I would take to learn more. And the people producing that content are probably hoping you're going to come to their website as well. And all those ads and all that clutter is what's paying for their time to produce the content that you were receiving for free. So then to have a party go through and strip all that away, 
I don't know how the people who produce the content that you wanted in the first place then get to continue to produce the authentic content you want because they authentically don't have any money to do it. But so that's one reason why we wouldn't tend to do that because we want to support an ecosystem to do that. So, um, but I, I'd love to know the actual query. If you want to send it later, I'll take a look. But you had said something about, well, how do we evaluate search quality? I can talk more about that if you want, yeah. but I didn't want to, you were still talking. So I, I did want to ask that one thing, but I didn't want to cut you off in the rest first. Sure. And just a quick response to that. Like, I, I agree that like there's another problem here, which is monetization on the internet. And I agree that taking away like traffic from websites is not necessarily good, but, um, but I'm, I, I might be wrong about this, but I'm, I believe that Google does this to very in various search categories, like song lyrics, like not like these knowledge chunks for like certain factual pieces of information. Like there's various search categories where Google does this exact thing. So I'm not sure like what, if what is the, license, the line that you're using in there? If we yeah. have a license agreement to do it, we would show more than sort of fair use kinds of snippets. With song lyrics, we license song lyrics. Sports scores, we license that. We're, we're, we're paying money to someone to produce that kind of content and allow them to reproduce it in, in full. If there's real basic factual information that we can understand from across the web, it's facts and, you know, the height of the Empire State Building isn't really a... Uh, a fact that you know it's like a fact that exists in the world so that's how we we kind of balance it you you want to be a good citizen with the ecosystem you want to make sure the ecosystem kind of kind of thrives so i mean speaking for us that's how we operate yeah um yeah i mean i guess you also brought up the idea of fair use like i'm not sure exactly how much content counts as fair use i'm not sure if you.com is doing fair use or if they actually do have deals with these websites maybe um, um but yeah i guess i guess the point there is there are ways to get it done um but there are different trade-offs like it might cost money or yeah um, well but. and anyway I, I totally get the idea that if we deliver people this is what i said before if we deliver someone to a product review at the verge and the verge has ads that are paying for the content and people don't like the ads because they just i don't want any ads then it's like okay you can perceive our search results are bad, even though the content was great, simply because you didn't like the content that was out there. Now, we actually have some guidelines that we do provide out to, to people to say, look, if you have ad heavy sites, we may not rank those as well. If we take all things into account, and we've got content that's equal of, of nature, but one is not sort of intrusive ads and you get a bunch of pop-ups and all that sort of stuff. And you know that's where we're trying to nudge the ecosystem to say, look, get get the balance right and that sort of thing. Um, but but to speak to the general search quality process, um, one of the things we do with anything that when we launch is it goes through an evaluation process, and in particular we use what we call human search quality raters. And you can go to our house search work site, and then if you type in house search work Reddit on Google, you won't find it. But if you type in house search works <laughs> Google, you will find it. Um, maybe you'll find it on Reddit as well. Sorry, <laughs> but it, it explains more about how the process works. But basically, we want to make an update to our our search algorithms. Maybe we want to find a better way of showing product review content. So we've got a sample of queries that we're we're generating and we're having human beings do the search. This is what we're doing now. This is what we're doing with our, you know, hopefully new and improved search systems that we've developed. You're seeing them side by side. Rate the results that you're getting. Did this seem to satisfy your query? Did this not satisfy your query? Was this helpful authoritative information? Was this not? Was this, you know, all sorts of things. And we have this like guide that the raters have to use. And it's like 200, 300 pages long. Um, and it's great reading because I've read it, um, but anybody can read it. And we publish it for anybody on the web to do it. And everybody who is a raider um, has to have gone through that guide so that everybody's rating from the same set of common criteria, which is explaining to them, this is how we're trying to determine if a search result is of quality or not in a methodical way and a way that's you know going across everything that's out there. 
So that all happens and we go through. And if the improvement looks positive from a search quality thing as verified by these human raters, and we have like 10,000 human raters that are used. So it's not just like one raider. If that improvement looks like it's improved the search quality as judged by ordinary human beings, then we'll go forward with the improvement. And that's how we, we figure out if the search quality that we think our, our algorithmic and machine learning systems are doing are matching what a human being would like. And if they don't seem to be doing it. So anytime we make a change, it's because some human review process like that has said, this seemed to be a good, good improvement. All that said, nothing is ever perfect. So if you make some changes, you can get some losses as well. And then we go through and we try to go through the process again to see how we can improve it and make a better thing with it from there. Now to give you a sense of how that works, like if you want to look at third party, um, one of the links I shared it with the, the response back to you and I'm trying to see if I have the, um, the URL with it, I'll find it later. But when this sort of thing happened, oh, it was at uh, surgehq.ai, and you can go from there and look at their blog, and I'm sure you'll find it. But you know, you had mentioned that this kind of happens on um, Hacker News. We've had threads like this before. So when one of these things happened earlier this year, Surge HQ, they, they do the same kind of process we do, but they're a third party and they're independent and they're just trying to measure, well, how, how is search quality from a, a qualitative type of thing? Let's get a lot of data. And they ran a bunch of queries, us and Bing up against each other and went through it. And the results came back that it was like 80% of our search results were deemed to be amazing or good. Like, that's pretty good. I, I'd like it to be 90%, like 99%, but you know, qualitatively speaking, that data was really helpful. Only 1% of the people said that our research results were bad. There was like 15%, they were like, it's okay, you could do better. So yeah, I'd like to see us improve on that, but that speaks to the search results being pretty good, not us just saying it, but this third party kind of saying that. All that said, all that said, I again don't want to take away from the perception that the, for, for people who are doing these searches and just feeling it's not getting what they want done and it's not happening as well for them. One of the thoughts I tend to feel that especially with sort of the Hacker News group is that I think there's a lot of programmers and software engineers and a lot of people who are developers, a lot of people are doing very, very technical queries. And I suspect that part of it might be that when they're doing these kinds of searches that they are sometimes getting results that are coming back because we're going broader from the words that they indicated or conversely, that they're already feeling like they need to control the query so much that they're doing a lot of quoting and a lot of requiring and kind of overriding the, the ranking systems we're already trying to use. Um, both of which are, are challenges neither of which I want to then say dismisses their concerns. But I think that's part of why it might resonate so much with them. And we need to do a better job, especially for that group. And we need to do a better job for everybody, but we do need to do a better job so that when you know these things come up, people on Hacker News maybe feel more inclined to say, actually, it's been pretty good, right? That, that would be our goal. Yeah, I guess as we're on the as we're on the, this this particular topic, I guess this would be a good time to talk about this exact matching issue that people have brought up. Um, if anyone is not aware, the issue is some like in Google, if you quote something, it, it is meant to do an exact match for that coded phrase or word, whatever it is. Um, and some people are complaining that this exact matching is not even working anymore. Google is just coming up with random results to keep them on Google and people have all their theories. Um, and Danny has pointed out that like, it's not necessarily that exact match does not work. It is that, uh, the way in which it works is just a bit confusing to people because of things like punctuation and alt text and like parts of the document that people may not like expect to be searching when they type their exact search query. Um, so like, and I've looked at like many possible examples. It seems every example can be traced to some like very, some issue with punctuation or there's text somewhere hidden on the page that doesn't necessarily look like it should be an exact match, but turns out to be because of the way that the text is tokenized. So it's kind of like, um, like I would say, um, the feature is just so unintuitive that people passionately believe that it doesn't work, even though it kind of does 
just because I guess the maybe it's more of a like UI UX failure here when people don't understand how to use it and they're like so mad at Google because of this. So maybe you can, yeah, just like sure. give your thoughts on this exact matching situation. Let me start back on one thing you said. Like, I guess one of the things is like, so we've done that to keep people on Google. There's no, I sometimes people say this and I, I'm like, there's no advantage to us keeping you on Google. Like there's, there's nothing happens. If you do more searches, it doesn't make us better necessarily, right? Maybe it frustrates you and you don't want to search with us more. And if you just stay on the page, I don't know that that helps. So it's like our, our goal is to get you to information as quickly as we can get you to the information. So making you do more searches or whatever, definitely not, but not a thing. What happens is I think by default, when people do searches on Google, we are going to gently try to match all the words as closely as they entered. But we're going to go beyond the words and also look for synonyms or related concepts as well. That's really important because a lot of the content people are seeking is written differently than the way that they search. So I, somebody yesterday, and this came up on the Hacker News thread, was searching on how to disassemble their sous vide. I hope I'm pronouncing that all right. I'm not the cook in the family, but I know my son got one for um, Christmas. And all, that's all it was doing was the whole time. I'm going to sous vide this. It seems like an all day process. So anyway, they'd search for disassembly. And in fact, they searched for every single word and they put it in quotes because they really absolutely positively thought what they needed to have would be a page that had all those words. And the word they used was disassembly. Um, and there was literally no page that we know of on the internet that matched all those words. But if they hadn't done that, the disassembly, I think, would have synonymized to something like take apart or clean. And that was the instruction manual, which is what you get if you had done it without all the, the queries. So it's important for us to go beyond the exact terms because People don't even know sometimes the term that they're using. That's another example of this, and we use this all the time. Somebody does a search for that movie with the guy on the island and the volleyball. And we'll figure out that that's um, Castaway, right? <laughs> Those aren't words in the title of the movie, but we can figure it out conceptually, and that's the match. And when that kind of thing happens, like even I'll go, wow, that was pretty cool. <laughs> we did a pretty good job on that. But when we get that wrong, and I think especially if you are after something especially technical, if we get that wrong or we're perceived to getting it wrong, absolutely agree, then I think there's the frustration that happens. So when these quoted searches happen, we are gonna match, we're gonna find content that has that exact word or that phrase, but there are some cases where, because we drop the punctuation out, uh, a good example is like, if you search for dog cats, quote dog cats, we should find those two words in that order next to each other. But if a page says dogs, comma, cats, we will match that page because we don't see the comma. We just see it as a space. And so that's a match as well. And it's apparently really, really complicated for us not to consider, you know, to, to consider the punctuation, like really, really hard. Like one of our top engineers spent yesterday looking at some of the stuff I sent them and he came back and he's like, yeah, that's really hard. That's probably not going to happen. But what we can do, and I think what we used to do, and it would have helped, is that when we do a snippet to try to explain to you why a page is relevant to your query, we have to do a better job of showing you the quoted aspect. And I think we haven't been doing that because as you mentioned, sometimes the quoted parts are in pages where there's just not really good information to snippet. They don't tell you much about it. And to us, that's not a very good snippet, but actually if those words were really important to you and you had quoted to them, knowing exactly where they appeared on the page reinforces to you that no, we weren't crazy and, and ignored it entirely, but we found it. So that's definitely something we'll look at hard. Can we get that back in there? So it, it closes some of that intuitive gap that's out there as well. Um, anyway, I kind of rambled on a bit from there and I see a hand went up too. So, and I don't know how we have, the hand's we have a going question. On the, <laughs> we have a question on the, uh, on the board here. It, it just listening to this, it seems to me that, and then please excuse me for being logical, but it seems to me that there's, um, you know, either there's something better than Google, which will displace Google, or uh, people just get tired of search and just don't do it anymore. Or, 
everybody's frustrated because their expectation level has gone up and it's the expectations are surpassing what technology can deliver. So, you know, I personally, I don't use, I, I try not to use Google search. I use DuckDuckGo because I, I'm more concerned about privacy. Um, but I find that you know, DuckDuckGo does not do a good, as good a job as Google. And sometimes to get something done, I'll go and use Google. But anyway, it's, it's just the idea of people are making a choice. And either there's something to choose between or there's some kind of frustration. And, and Google is becoming seen as a utility. And people are treating it like PG&E. Anyway, I'll just leave that on the table for both of the presenters to, to comment on. I have tons to say, but I'll, I'll, I'll yield to Dimitri first if he would like to say something. Um, sure. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. Uh, so you made a point that there, like, either some there is something better than Google that will displace it, or people will just get tired of search and not do it anymore. Or, and I guess one one thing uh, that I would say there is, I do think that Google. I think I think. A lot of the problems that are faced by Google are also faced by most of the other big, like Bing, DuckDuckGo. Like they all have a bunch of SEO spam in their first results well, by some people's definition of SEO spam. Um, so I think it's not like a Google issue. It might, <clears throat> might just be a, an issue with the way that most people have thought about search because most search engines like are just some kind of copy of Google. Everyone is thinking about search in the same way, and they have been thinking about it in this exact same way for the last like 20 years or so. And I think the search engine that is better than Google will probably not look like Google. Like, um, I think we will need to rethink what search is on this version of the internet and the way things are right now. Um, maybe that means like one one like put one possibility there to throw out a concrete example is like a social search engine where you have, you can say, I trust this person and all the websites they trust, um, or I trust recommendations from this person. Um, or maybe there's something where you can connect all these private uh, channels that you're in. So you can search your own discords and friend groups and all these private communities you're in, and that's your search engine. Um, I think there's lots of possibilities for what, how to build like better search, but I wouldn't say it's like better than Google it, it like the, search engine that really tries a new paradigm would be better than all of them because they all do the same thing right now, I think. Well, Dimitri, don't you think that uh, the uh, part of the problem lies in the fact that the index is an index of symbol symbols, uh, possibly with some synonym replacement, and that uh, we think in terms of semantics? So the meaning of what things is what's important for us, as opposed to the string of characters. Um, I mean, I, I think Google, I, like if anything, Google has mastered the idea of semantic search and like typing in words and getting things that do not match <laughs> the exact, like you can type in, yeah, like movie with the person on the boat and it will probably figure out like what movie you're referring to. Um, so I think I think that's something that like that's something that is like a double-edged sword because when it works, it feels really good. When it doesn't work, it feels like there's no way to correct correct it, which is what people were complaining about as well. It's like, oh, well, if Google's AI thinks that I meant this, even though I typed these literal words and this is what I actually meant, but Google thinks I was talking about something else because they think they're smarter than me. Um, like that's what people are mad at, but like when it works, it feels like magic. Agreed. I think I think you're right, and it is it is magic. Um, you know, you're you're much too young to remember the days when we didn't have one, or a search engine that worked, or you could go through a list of no oh, four or five thousand hits to see if you could find something that you wanted to find. 
Well, I'm not too young to remember that. <laughs> um, they, they were very magical when they came up, um, which is part of the reason. I, just to go back, because as mentioned on my career before, I mean, I used to be a journalist. Um, and when I would do searching as a journalist, I would use things like LexisNexis, and it would require me to know very arcane language where I would go through and have to define dates, and I would have to go through and define sources and all the words I thought could possibly be in there to get the matches. And then somebody had to pay an extremely high amount of money for all the searches that we would do as journalists. Um, and then I had left to do web development and then started writing about how search engines operate. And I would cover both the search marketing aspect, but also the impact of search engines on lives and how they operated from a technological basis. And I did that for 20 years. I ran two different websites about it. Um, and so, and then I had gotten tired of writing about search engines. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't write another article about meta tags to save my life, I thought. So um, I retired, but then Google quickly said, well, no, you can't retire. You need to come explain search more. And I ended up here. But what I will say is, search engines to me i love them and i love the technology and they've been revolutionary for people in ways that i think those who have grown up on them simply don't recognize or even if you're a publisher having been someone who was at a newspaper that went through a newspaper war and had to spend money to try to get people to come to them and then today you can create a news blog and you can receive people coming to your website for free through a search engine you get those kinds of connections it it's it's miraculous it's so good that we do take it for granted. But then to come back to, I think, some of the things that were mentioned. So first of all, on the DuckDuckGo thing and the privacy, well, I certainly hope you would come back to Google and try us again as well. Um, we are a private search engine. We're not handing out your search data to people. So, you know, your, your, your searches don't go anywhere. They, they stay with us. You don't have to have any of your search activity logged if you don't want to do it. If you want it, you can do it. It's like autosave. I like to have things autosaved. It saves me from losing work. But that's sort of down to you. Um, but, you know, aside from the privacy aspect, um, one of the reasons you'll probably find a difference in the search results that we do versus, say, a DuckDuckGo, which really, I think, relies heavily on being, we make a huge investment in search. We do a lot, a lot of work to make sure we're showing trustworthy information. So that if you do a search for, like, COVID vaccines are dangerous, we're going to show you really trustworthy information. And we've invented and systems to try to identify that, gosh, even though we could match those exact words, are we exacting, are we also matching pages that are trustworthy or helpful or showing expertise or authority or that, you know, are reliable for this type of thing that we refer to as a money or your life query, where your money or your life depends on it. That is a huge investment. And it's a really big thing. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. And then I think there was the question of, well, what happens? Because people either get frustrated and give up or something else takes over from Google. And what wasn't mentioned is that we just keep improving because that's what we should be doing. We're not going, well, everybody's frustrated and I guess they'll just have to stay frustrated. And I guess that's it. Like we're not sitting around just saying, well, that's it. It's all done. There's nothing else for us to do. Google was not the first search engine to come onto the web. And Google, in the time that I covered it externally, and in the time I've been to it now, never sits around and says, well, that's it. We've got it all wrapped up. There's a great deal of sense of the greatest new thing could be around the corner if we don't keep improving ourselves. We have to prove ourselves every day with every query. So something like this has happened now. I have seen happen where people have been frustrated about Google search results five years ago. And Google will go through and make improvements or 10 years ago. And then Google goes through and makes improvements. And thank goodness it does make improvements because it's a good search engine. I'd like to see it grow. And I'd like to see it succeed because I think it's been great. And also because what I think is also sad is if you have this thing, you use it and you like it, you trust it, you don't want to see it go away. I think you do kind of want to root for it. And that goes back, and I did mention that I'm old, but if everybody else is old too, you'll remember AltaVista. And I would wager that a number of people here used to use AltaVista. And I would also wager that a number of you shifted over to Google, and when people would ask you what search engine you were using, you probably said something along the lines of, well, I used to use AltaVista, but now I'm with Google. I heard that so much, you have to joke about it. It was like saying someone had broken up with a partner. Well, we were married, but you know, it didn't work out. No one wanted to leave AltaVista. AltaVista just didn't keep improving. 
Google does not want to do that. We want to make sure we're constantly improving. And so when we hear things like this, we take it really seriously. It's like, well, how do we keep improving? Because we want to keep showing ourselves to people so they can trust that we're going to be delivering on what they want to have happen. So I would enter that in as among the things that would be possible to happen. I did also want to remark on the whole expectations things because, and again, because I feel so old and covering all this for so long, I used to teach people how to use search engines when they first started, and you actually had to do such a thing, right? Today, nobody thinks about how do I use the search engine? Where's the instruction manuals? Do I need to read anything? It's like, just go. Here's the box. You start searching. People used to have to do searches. Sometimes you do Boolean searches, and we would deal with parentheses and all that sort of stuff or whatever. And one of the things I found remarkable is that people would search and search for things, and if they couldn't find it, they blamed themselves. The search engine was never at fault. It was the person. I just don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I can't find it. I watched one person try to find the phone number for a place to get the operating hours. And this was like in 98 or whatever, right? So they were searching. The information wasn't even available on the web at that point. And what I said was, look, you could just call 411 for the phone number and then call the place and they'll tell you if they're open. But that person spent like 10 minutes trying to figure it out and in the end blame themselves when the reality was it wasn't their fault, it wasn't the search engine's fault, the information just wasn't there. But I do think there's been this shift because the search engines have gotten so much better that now we really expect them to find everything, even if it's not there. And if you don't find it, why didn't you find it? It's your fault and you failed. And that is absolutely not meant to mean it was actually the user's fault and we don't need to worry about that or whatever. Because in the end, our job as a search engine is not to leave the user frustrated. We need to try to find ways to communicate to them so they understand what's going on. That can be things like you can do some queries and we'll tell you, hey, like it's like a new message we introduced this year to say, hey, we've got some results that match all those words you entered we just don't know if they're that good, it, but this is just the best we've got. And by the way, here are some tips you might want to try because we've done, you've done all you can do. We've done all we can do with this kind of query, but maybe if you do some of these tips and use some of these other things, we can get some more information. We can kind of help you get to where you're kind of looking for. So maybe we'll do some more of that type of stuff as well. I, we don't want people to be frustrated. And if their expectations have gone up, we need to ride to the expectations as well as best we can. Yeah, hi. Um, I just have a, an anecdote. Um, I know it's probably one of everybody's got a dozen of these, but my um, I've been on the web for building building websites on the web for 25 plus years. Uh, followed Danny's career and watching uh, learning about search engine optimization from him and from uh, some of his uh, uh, articles over the years, but the the thing that just came up recently in my life is searching for um, an RV trip, which we've never taken an RV before. We want to do a big summer vacation. And my wife, who is not technical, um, had done about three or four, I would call them sessions of research using Google uh, to try and find out all of the things that we don't know <laughs> about taking a trip in an RV. <laughs> um, and there's just a ton of knowledge that we feel like we have to catch up on what it is that we're going, that we're getting ourselves into. And on her third or fourth session of doing this, she asked me, is there a, a, a search tool that I should use other than Google? Because she was frustrated by the results that she seemed to be coming across over and over and over again in her searching. And again, we're, I'm talking about a wide range of search terms, uh, partly because we don't know what we don't know yet, um, and we're learning as we're uh, researching this topic. Um, and she was, um, she said to me that it felt like all she got the results on were sites that were um, filled with ads themselves and were focused on trying to get her into the, into their purchase pipeline, you know, into that, um, uh, which at this point in our research, that's not where we wanted to be. We wanted to have more broad general knowledge about uh, these types of trips. And we do want authentic, uh, I, I think the term that um, Dimitri and his um, papers talked about was that authentic stuff. Um, that was lacking in the search results and, and still is something we're struggling to find. 
Um, I think I'm going to append Reddit on to a couple of my queries. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say and see if there's uh, thoughts about that, the authentic stuff. So first of all, I'm sorry we weren't getting more of the authentic content to it. Um, we actually have things that are trying to appear sometimes and we understand that someone's going on a search journey. That's the kind of word we would use as well. And you're doing these repeated queries and we're trying to help you be able to pick up from where you left off um, so that you can kind of keep advancing on it. Um, so, and if you think of some of the queries, you want to share them later, I, I'd love to take a look at them to see what we can do. Um, some of the stuff we've done with the product review stuff, we might try to expand that more. These things aren't necessarily products, but kind of are akin to that type of thing, like, you know, like exactly what you were sort of going through. Um, so if we can find a way to improve on that, you know, we'll look at it. I think one of the biggest challenges is also that's out there though, is this thing of what I mentioned before, who's writing the content, <laughs> right? Like if this were 10 years ago, um, ideally you'd have someone who'd gone on an RV journey and wrote you a whole checklist of all the things that there was to do, right? And that's a lot of work. And I don't know that everybody's producing that kind of content. Uh, I'll give you another example. I took a trip out to Tunisia once with my oldest son and we went to visit Star Wars places out in Tunisia, which is amazing. Like, you know, here's Luke Skywalker's house and we're standing out front and, and I learned some things on the web and I still want to go through and write up this whole post to explain how anybody can do this because it was an incredible experience. I just haven't found the time because I got to write the blog post, I got to edit it, I get the photos up, I got to do all this sort of work. Now I tweeted about it. I did a whole Twitter thread because it was very easy for me to put that together. It's very easy content creation in that regard. So part of the challenge I think we have is if people aren't doing these kinds of blogs of authentic types of things like they kind of maybe used to, then how do we do a better job of bringing it in from places where things have moved? One of the things places where people are doing is there's a lot more short form video. So how do we bring more of that stuff in? Or Maybe we do need to bring in more, as I said before, of the stuff where people are sharing experiences in foreign places. And, and perhaps we've been just lacking on that. We've got to get more of that stuff back in there. Dimitri, tell us a couple of things about you. You're, you have a project that you have in progress, and you might tell us where you are. I, I have no idea. <laughs> One of the amazing <laughs> things about the internet is I called you up and you were there. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, usually I'm in San Francisco, but right right now I'm I'm in the Trinidad and Tobago, um, which is a place in the Caribbean where I'm from. Um, and yeah, the other thing I guess yeah the relevant thing that I'm working on is a blog directory called Blog Surf. Um, it's meant to be a directory of personal blogs. Um, right now it's just like a collection of all these blogs and various categories. Um, but soon we'll hopefully have a search engine as well, so you can search all these blog posts. Um, and I think, uh, like, also to respond to the question about the this RV search story, um, <clears throat> I think that, like, I would I would call into question the 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 assertion that there is no authentic content to be found on this topic. Um, uh, I think, like. Like it appears to me that Google prioritizes these big media publications and these more corporate websites that tend to be more ad heavy in their first results. Um, I can give an example query for this as well. Um, but like if you go to like page six or seven of Google results, then you might finally find a blog or some type of real person who is just writing about their experience. So I'm not sure uh, like what like why exactly that result is so low quality. Um, maybe the person who is just blogging about their experience does not care about SEO and did not do some basic things that would help them get ranked higher in Google. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd be curious to hear Danny's thoughts on this on like why, why it appears from the outside that these like big publications are always the top, even if there seems to be like a good quality, normal post by a normal person, like page six. Um, so I'm not saying that there's not that content that's out there. I'm saying possibly there's less of it that there was in the past and possibly there's good content out there, but it's in places outside of the ordinary web pages where we've typically looked at. I also think that, um, I also think that you, 
It's a difficult thing. Like I did it very quickly, like how to plan an RV trip across the US, right? And I've got a thing called the getaway couple. I'm going to guess that the getaway couple has gone out there and discovered that, hey, this is a really cool thing for us to write about. I haven't read, read these because we're on the thing or whatever. I also see somebody called the rolling pack. Here's how to plan it. And it's these kinds of things you've seen before. These are affiliate links. Here's some things to kind of keep in mind. And there's another thing called RV share. And I think the difficulty is they've learned how to earn money producing that kind of content. And so we can then dismiss it as, well, it's not a authentic. But it might very well be perfectly good and helpful, authentic content. That's just how they're making a living to do it, right? I did a lot of hiking during the pandemic. I was doing searches for hiking near me in Southern California. And I constantly, constantly got to a website called The Hiking Guy. And he's got a wonderful website. It's the exact kind of content you would want to find. I had no difficulty getting to that content at all. Told me everything I needed to know about places to go, all the details or whatever. And yet he had affiliate links and he has information. And I'm like, thank goodness you have that. I hope you're earning money. I actually sent him money and did a donation because I was like, you're doing such good content. I want you to be successful with it. But someone else might have landed on his website and said, wow, this is somebody who generated good content as a start, continued to develop it up to they could build a business about it. And now we're going to decide it's not authentic. That's why <laughs> I don't want to take away from the fact that there's absolutely good quality content that's out there and that we probably need to do an even better job on it. And maybe again, that means that there are times when we should be surfacing content from Reddit because that is the most useful content or other places that are out there where people are sharing experiences. I think that's been one of the big takeaways we've certainly had off of this is that people want to hear even more from really community sites where people are sharing tips and all that sort of stuff. That's really well heard. And I think we do need to make improvements in that regard. But there's nothing in the system that's designed to say, yeah, that's a big site. Just make the big site go up. Like that, that's not how the system works. It's not really looking at signals in that kind of manner. Um, it's really designed to try to look at what do we think is the most relevant, helpful, trustworthy, authoritative information we have as validated by what human reviewers tell us as well when, when we put it up against their thing. So Danny, you just to translate, don't blame the search engine on the information that gets put up on the web. But I don't want to translate that way. And I think it's really poor if our, if our response is, hey, we just reflect what's on the web, which has been a response that we've sometimes said. True. Sometimes, sometimes the content isn't there and there's not good content, but sometimes the content is there and we just need to figure out where it's now residing. Or if it's not residing, we need to then think about, are there more things we can do to support an ecosystem that they want to put it out on the open web? that they want to share? Can we make it easier for the content to be there? Because people want it. So yeah, I don't, I don't want to just blame the web. And say, well, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's perfectly fair, right. by the way. <laughs> yes, I have a quick, quick comment in response to, to that. Like it seemed it like, well, maybe this is a bad translation, but it seems like what, what you actually just said is the corporate and big publications are on top because the black box algorithm says these are the best websites. The black box algorithms, which are judged by some group of people who evaluate search quality, said these are good. Therefore, like that is what is on top. Um, so I guess in response to that, I think a lot of the people who resonated with this post would probably say something like, who are these people who, who are evaluating your algorithm if they actually think these S, these like spam filled corporate sites are the best results? Yeah, so the, 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 the Verge isn't a spam filled corporate site and I've got someone on Reddit saying that they don't like them for their product reviews. I, yeah. the, the hiking blog that I mentioned is not a spam filled site. Some of these RV things sure. that I only looked at them very yes. briefly are spam filled sites. They're probably really helpful yeah. sites. Sure. Like not ever, we're not saying every result has these like big publications, but if you search for like a recipe, for example, a lot of the results will be these big rest, like these big sites. And if you go to page six, you'll find like these smaller, more personal, personal blogs. And maybe those people are making money and like whatever too, but like, 
And I, and I would say, I don't know that the qualitative data is, it's always the bulk of the sites that are going like that as well. And the reason I would say that to you is because when we make a change, we will hear from people who run the small sites if it has not been helpful to them. There are lots of people who run small sites and we invest huge amounts of resources to make sure anybody of any size site can be successful. We don't have special support options just for the big people. We don't even charge for it. It's for everybody that's out there. We want everybody to succeed. So the systems are not designed to che just reward the big kinds of sites that are out there. The raiders, by the way, the raiders are just ordinary people that are hired that go through a training process. And the ratings never go directly into search results. They don't rate an individual page and say, well, that's a, a 10 out of 10, make sure you rank it better. They just sort of validate whether the model is corresponding to what these raiders kind of do. They're kind of like a check on it. So the ratings don't go directly back into search in any way. You couldn't do it. Like there's trillions of pages and they change all the time. So there, that's not what's happening with it. There's just ordinary people who follow the guidelines that anybody can read and say, these things gave us helpful information. And we share that with everybody to say, this is what we'd like to do with helpful information. One of the things I've seen, by the way, like this is like with the, sorry, I'm going on, but like, um, like with the recipes, we've seen people complain, like, oh, I just, I don't want the whole story that's going on, right? Like, just give me the recipe. And there was like um, one woman, Deb Perlman. So she has a whole recipe blog that um, she runs called Smitten Kitten. And she's like, look, your recipe writer, you write whatever you want. This is not a just shut up and be in the kitchen cook type of situation. You're providing the recipes and you want to provide a story that goes along with it. You should do it. Don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't do that sort of thing. And I don't kind of know how you deal with the balance there because then you have other people like, well, I just wanted the recipe. So then they don't like it, even though it might be a totally authentic recipe and somebody has got a story that they want to tell you about with it. And maybe it's that we need to be a little bit more tolerant all around of things. I, mean, I don't know. It's a challenge. We have over here in the corner who's been waiting patiently. I think you already answered my question, Danny, but I'll just to make sure. Um, let's say, so I'll piggyback off your hiking example from earlier, um, where you gave an example of a hiking website that had affiliate links that still offers really good information. Um, but let's say that there are two hiking websites and one offers good information without any affiliate links. And there's the one that you were talking about, which offers good, equally good information with affiliate, with affiliate links. Um, would Google qualify those as equally, like if, they, if the information was basically equal, Google would, e would basically rank those sites as being equal? We really wouldn't look at the affiliate links present and then say, well, we could put you down because you had affiliate links. Just like we wouldn't look at, oh, we can understand there's ads, so therefore you're not as good as the one without ads. Um, we would understand if you seem to um, have a huge amount of intrusive ads. That's part of what we call our, our page quality, um, or page call, I can't even think of the name, our core web vitals type of thing that we try to understand and that we communicate about as well. But just the mere presence of monetization wouldn't cause us to say, okay, well, the other person gets the bump with it. Okay, thanks. Okay, does anybody else have something they wanna say? I see, put the hand up. Hi, thank you very much for coming to speak to us. I was wondering, um, in relation to the ongoing conversation on trust in the internet, if you could talk more specifically about the developer experience, particularly for searching for help. I know in, in many of the Hacker News threads, which I'm sure you've read, there have been significant complaints about, uh, first of all, spam sites, outright copying GitHub issues, stack overflow, et cetera. I know I and my boss have very long new blacklists that take out the whole first page of Google results sometimes for this. Um, and then, of course, uh, spam sites, copying and pasting internal. Uh, help pages that are not authoritative and, and, and to the point where uh, the, the official help pages for uh, languages like Python and REST are uh, not always at the top. Um, I'm sure this is something you've considered and I was wondering if you could speak more to what Google is doing. 
Um, so one of the things is we're trying to try to identify an original source of a, you know, we want to we want to show original content ahead of anything that is simply uh, duplicating it or not adding value to it. So that that's one of our goals, and we have systems that are designed to do that. They're not always perfect, but that's the, the, they're always being improved, and it's not even a new thing. We've we've constantly refining the things that we're already doing. Um, we even do things like allow sites. That if they distribute their content, um, we'll recommend to them to use things like what we call the canonical tag. It's not just our tag, it's anybody can use it for any kind of search engine, but it's a way to indicate if someone were to have permission to use your content to duplicate it somewhere else, that they effectively point back and say, no, no, I'm just a duplicate, the canonical is over here. So think about that in terms of your ranking purposes. So we do that sort of thing. We do huge amount of spam work, including trying to catch content that's simply scraping other people's content and not, you know, there's there's no value that that's gone with it. Um, a, a huge amount of work. Um, so it, it's very much top of mind to just keep improving on that sort of thing. And you know, if there's examples where it's not happening. I'm always happy to hear them because it's not perfect, but it's by no means sort of a back of the mind type of thing. It's very front of the mind. There's, there's an entire group of people who do nothing but look at both spam issues and also then just look at how we improve on, on original content issues. Thank you. Anything more? Okay. Um, I want to thank uh, you all, really, for your contributions. Um, Danny, thank you. Um, it was uh, very helpful to understand what was going on. And Dimitri, thank you for uh, taking the uh, time to make a post and say what you thought was the important thing here. And uh, I think that uh, you're, you're out there really trying to make uh, space in the uh, in the in the uh, internet for small um, personal bloggers and provide support for them and i think that's a that's an admirable choice and um you know i wish you the very best of luck um i think that uh, uh what you're trying to do is in fact one of the directions the web's clearly going um google is uh has some real advantages in the sense that it is huge it has a bunch of uh, web uh, crawls that are uh, uh second to none and i my complaint about uh, google right now is that not all not all things that are clearly in the web crawl always appear in the answers on the uh, out of the index that is because the crawl is so large, uh, things now get lost. Yeah, I, I didn't think I'd ever encounter that, but I found it four times in the last month. And that, mm. that seemed to me to be just an unreasonably large. On the other hand, if it were 10 years ago, I wouldn't have found anything at all. I wouldn't have been able to show <laughs> that it even existed. So um, in any case, thank you very much.